Ever wonder what motivates people to get plastic surgery? Did they regret it? What can we learn from the weird and wild things that happen at our plastic surgery clinic? We're going to tell some stories, get some laughs, and learn on. Clinic Talk with Sabrina Saad. On the Plastic Surgeon Podcast. Hello, my friends. I'm Dr. Javad Sajan, and of course, I'm here with my lovely wife and CEO of Allure Aesthetics, Sabrina Sajan. Welcome back, and thanks for listening. Please rate us and review us on Apple Podcasts to support the channel. On Clinic Talk, we tell real stories of fun, strange, hopeful, and educational things that happen at our clinic from day to day. Yep, we get a lot of weird and hilarious things happening at the clinics. You can find the clinic at AlloreAesthetic.com if you want more information. So, Janu, what clinic stories are we talking about today? This week was so wild. 2020 it keeps, keeps getting wackier and wackier, don't you think so? I, I'm, I, I can't. I don't want it to get any wackier, I should say. <laughs> so, guys, yesterday we had a burglary in our Seattle office. Yes, it was really scary. So I was operating um, at our Linwood Surgical Center. And then I, f- I finish, I leave the OR, talk to my caregiver, and I walk to Sabrina's desk, and the phone rings. Yeah. And the phone says Seattle Plastic Surgery, which is our other downtown office. And I'm like, well, that's weird. Why are they calling? And it was like 6.30, right? Yeah. And then Sabrina picked up. And, w- and who called you, Sabrina? So Lexi from our Seattle office called, and she's like, Sabrina. I was like, Lexi, are you okay? Um, and then she was like, yeah, there's someone here. And I'm like, Explain to me what's going on. And then... So, Alexi's our front desk at Seattle. Yes. Alexi um, handles the front desk in Seattle. Um, and she was the closing shift down there. Um, so she's super worried. Um, she's nervous. And I'm like, what's going on, Lexi? Um, and then she says, there was someone here. There's someone here. And I'm like, who is it? Like, explain to me what's going on. And she says uh, she was leaving the office to use the restroom. Um, so there's other people in the office and the providers was providing treatments. And she said, I stepped outside the office um, to use the bathroom um, and I smell smoke. And she was like, I was I was looking around and she's like, it smells like smoke, like someone's smoking in the office. And she's looking and then she looks down the hallway and she sees um, a can, a big can. Um, she sees a jar of um, ice cream and she sees a backpack. And she's looking and then she steps a little bit more further into the hallway and she sees this individual without pants. And this is in our office. This is like down the hallway from our office. Okay. Right okay. outside. So, uh, so in the hallway of the office building. Yes. So I, the hallway in the office building, she sees someone who has their pants and she just turns around like, oh, I, I, I wasn't supposed to see that. Like, I don't know what's going on there. So the guy is exposing himself in the hallway of the downtown Seattle building, super secure building. Yes. The super secure building that has access card, you know, little scanners everywhere. Um, there's security a security guard. guard at the office, at the building um, till like 11 p.m. Um, and this person's there and she's explaining the story to me over the phone. And then she says she saw that and she turned around quickly and she's like, oh, my God, that's so weird. And guys, just so you know, Lexi is a harmless human being. She's probably 4'11", <laughs> like 90 pounds. You know, it's just so you get a visual of her. Yeah um and she like you know she just turns away and then she just goes to the bathroom and then she comes back from the bathroom and she's about to go you know our office has a little a little hallway inside the office and she's about to get into the hallway of the office and she sees that guy in the office hallway the same guy again the same guy again who was exposing his genitals in the hallway of the office building yes and he has his pants on this time and he's in the office and he's saying my leg my leg And Lexi's like, I don't know who you are, but you cannot be here right now. This is not the time Like, you cannot be here right now. And he's like um, saying all these weird things that she couldn't understand what he was trying to say. And she's like, you just cannot be here right now. You have to exit the office right now. You have to exit the office. And then eventually he leaves the office and we have glass doors. So they're clear so you can see what's going on in the hallway. And then she goes to the front desk and that's when she's on the phone with me and she's talking to me. Um, And she says that he's lingering lingering around in the near the front door as she's talking to me she's telling me that so she was able to kick him out of the office yeah but he was hanging out in the front 
Wait, so I don't get it. So she goes to the bathroom. On her way to the bathroom, she sees this weird individual running around naked. She goes to the bathroom, then comes in the office and finds the same guy in the office? Yes, the same guy was in the office. And then she- that's some That's some Chucky stuff. <laughs> and she was surprised because she's like, I did not even go for probably 60 seconds. She was like, I went to the bathroom so quickly because I was like, I have to get back and before patients come back to the office. She washed her hands, I hope. Yes. Okay, right. <laughs> but she like rushed back because she knew she had to cover the front desk and patients were coming. Um, so she rushed back and it was not even like, she said it wasn't even a few minutes and this person is all the way in the, inside the office hallway. It's a, the hallway is the private hallway. It's not in the lobby of the office. It's in the back of the yes, office. Yes, where the clinic rooms are. But what does she tell him when she sees him? She says, leave? Yeah, she said, you need to leave the office right now. You need to leave the office right now. And then he leaves. And then she comes back to the front desk. And she's on the phone with me at this time. And she's explaining to me all, all of this. And she's saying he's lingering at, at the front desk still. So I was like, okay, Lexi, so give me the security guard's phone number right now. So I grabbed my cell phone. I'm on the office phone with her. I grabbed the security cell phone and I'm dialing it. And I told her to just keep a watch on it to make sure he doesn't come back. Mm -hmm. I hang up the phone with Lexi and I call the security. And I said, there's a guy. He's, I don't know what he's doing up, upstairs. He tried to get into our office. Um, now we don't see him. Um, he was trying to do something in the office. We're not sure. So the security rushes upstairs. Then I call Lexi back. And I'm like, do you see him anywhere? Do you see him? And Lexi's like, no. We don't see him anywhere, but his stuff is still there in the hallway, but we don't see him anywhere. Um, she said the security checked everywhere. She, the security checked the woman's bathroom, the men's bathroom. She checked all the other offices that were locked to make sure they were all still locked. Um, and then she's like, I don't know where he is. I don't see him. And then she said, but the, it really still smells like smoke everywhere. Like, cause he was, he was smoking a cigarette. Oh, I forgot to mention this. When Lexi found him, he was smoking a cigarette in the building. In, in our office. In the office. That's, cr that's not normal at all. No, not at all. He had a, two backpacks. He was smoking a cigarette and he was wearing a fur coat um, and a hat. So then this guy's MIA. Yes. And, so, uh, and, and then the security can't find him anywhere. <laughs> no, can't find him. But his stuff is still there. Security, so he has to be in the building. They're looking, looking everywhere. 20 minutes go by, I call Lexi again. I'm like, Lexi, how, what's going on? Is everything okay? Like, he's like, yeah, everything is fine. Security couldn't find him. I, maybe he left. Like, I'm not sure. I don't see him anymore. I'm like, okay, if anything changes, give me a call right away. And so I just finished my surgery. Yeah, we were in Linwood. Yes, we were waiting for our operation to finish. And then we, our, our, our Sabrina and I talked and, you know, we love our employees, our staff, they're our family. And we, we, we both decided we are going to go to downtown to see what's going on. So as soon as my patient was discharged, we got in the car following all traffic laws, pretty much, sped, out, sped to downtown. because. Legally. Legally, on the sh not on the shoulder, HOV. And then uh, we made sure, because the only people that were there were Lexi and Turi, right? Yes. And Turi, is, what does Turi do again? She's an esthetician. Yeah, she's our master esthetician, one of them. We have four, amazing person. And so we're speeding down there and Sabrina's calling them, hey, what's going on? Everything good? They're good. We have security cameras, so we're dialing into our security cameras. We're checking on our staff and e everything looks fine. But at the back of our mind, we're like, where did this guy just disappear to? Yeah. And for people that don't know, our office has two entrances slash exits. One main with glass doors. And then there's a back door that's like a fire emergency exit that locks from the inside. Yeah, it's a wooden door. Yeah. So then we get to the, so then Sabrina and I park in emergency three minute parking because I'm worried about the staff. Something smells, right? And it's not so cigarette smoke. So we, we run up the elevator, we see security. She's like, hey, everything's good. Nice lady, yeah. security person. And then security was really excited. She's like, yeah, I didn't find anyone. I was looking, looking, couldn't find anyone. Then, you know, everyone's really excited about this whole story. And then we're Snapchatting Lexi yes. and we're like asking her what happened. And she's like super excited. And she's like, yeah, I told him to leave. I told him to leave. Yeah. And, and Lexi's like, like, I saved the day. So we got, we, we talked to security on the way to the office. We get up there. Lexi's telling us the story. I snap Lexi telling me the story. Snapchat at Real Doctor Seattle. And then what's going on, Sabrina? And then we're like, okay, let's just make sure everything is fine. Let's see what he, if he touched anything. Like, let's just take a look. So we're going down our clinic rooms. We have a few clinic rooms and a few consult room. And we saw Ash. Yeah. We saw Ash. On the floor. Uh, on the floor. Mm -hmm. And I found. A no, so then we're like, mm -hmm. okay, we smell something. We smell something. And we're like, okay, let's get close. We're going to the rooms and we smell something really strong. Like someone with cigarette. There's a cigarette on fire somewhere. Or lit somewhere, and we we're just smelling it. So we go into one of the rooms, 
and it's reeking of cigarette smell. So then do you remember where you found? Yeah. Yes. So we walk into one of our exam rooms and the smell was so strong of cigarettes. I could s- swear there was a cigarette there. And I look everywhere and inside the sharps container, the big red sharps container, there was a cigarette with a little bit of um, a cigarette butt with a little bit left on it on smoking hidden in the sharps container. Yes. So this individual probably, when he saw Lexi, he dropped it into the sharps container. In the, in the exam room, we see ashes everywhere, yep. a trail. And I saw an open packet of antibacterial bacitracin ointment in the same exam room. Yes, there was an ointment. And remember the jar of Vaseline was left open? Yes, the, the, there was a, yeah, we're like, what's going on? Why is Vaseline ointment? Cigarette. Yeah, and we're like, and so we're checking every room. So, this, it, so yeah. the, the story kind of adds up because when Lexi had found him, he kept saying, my leg, my leg. So it may, and he had a cigarette. So he was probably in that room. He dropped a cigarette in there, nicely made himself at the clinic and applied all these ointments on him, probably. And that's when Lexi kicked him out. Yeah. And then we're looking. Exactly. And, and I think there might have been something else going on with the ointment, but we're, we're going to talk about that. So okay. then we're looking in every room, and, I, oh, and Lexi's scared. Yeah. We hear music, bla- our rooms all have private stereo systems, right? So people can play the music. In one of our procedure rooms, we hear music blasting. Yeah, in one of the procedure rooms, we're like, why is there music playing in there? And then we like open the door of that procedure room and there's bla- music is blasting yep. in there. And like I, mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. someone was in there and then we smell smoke in there as well. Exactly. And I'm going in there and all I, all I got is one and two right here. I got security with me, right? Yeah, that security lady's not there right now. So I'm opening every room. I'm like, Will anyone in here? looking in every corner, every cabin. We have some long closets, checking everything. And we see hints of ash. Mm-hmm. Um, and we found, and that's it, right? Yeah. And then we finally uh, get to the last room, which is my office, our consultation room, where I meet patients. Yeah. I try to turn the knob. It doesn't not turn the door, the door handle, not the knob. The door, it's, it's not opening. Yes, it's not opening. And you can only lock it from the inside. And then some, Sabrina immediately calls the security office to send someone. The nice lady runs up, all red face. I'm ba- I, and I know the guy's in there now. I'm like, someone's in my office. I don't know what they're doing, what they're stealing. We have locked cabinets, but in those locked cabinets, there's um, fillers, there's, there's um, information, all kinds of sensitive stuff, computers in there, you know, all my stuff, my fridge, my private bathrooms in there, all kinds of stuff. So basically, I'm knocking on the door. Open the door. Open the door. Let me in. Um, no, nothing's happening. No, no reply. At no all. reply. I start gently nudging the door with my foot or kicking the door, and then we start hearing noises. Then the door opens. The door opens. There is this guy, Caucasian guy, six foot one. He has a big bamboo-like bat in his hand. He's holding it. And Lexi's above. like, "That's him." That's yeah, him. yeah. Lexi screams, "That's him." He's holding the bat above his head in a very violent fashion. And I, I, I write that second security and you are dealing with him. I grab my cell phone and I call 911. Yep. And I'm like, Sabrina, snap it. And she's like, no, I'm calling 911. I'm like, snap it. And she's like, I'm calling 911. I'm like, okay. So then he's like, I'm like, I, I, was, I was a little bit aggressive because I'm like, what are you doing in here? Yeah. Uh, what do you want? Uh, no, I said, what did you take? I asked him. Now, what do you want? And then he's like, oh, I didn't take anything. I didn't take anything. I didn't take anything. I was on the computer. There's a conspiracy saying all these words that nothing makes sense. Swinging his bat thing in a very violent fashion, if you will. He's like, look at my backpack. I didn't take anything. He starts opening his backpack. That's when he drops his bat. Yeah, he puts his bat on the floor and I quickly grab the bat. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) So, and then um, security's up there and she comes, well, I have the bat in hand. And she tells him, you can't go anywhere. Yeah, and I'm on the phone with the police. at this, so All this is happening at the same time. I'm on, the, I'm on the phone with the police and I'm saying, hello, I got, you know, this guy's here. He's trying to steal something. We don't know who he is. He was hiding in one of our, um, one of our consultation rooms or medical practice. Um, please get here right away. And he's aggressively holding a bat in his hand. And there's a security lady here, but he's being starting to get aggressive and all this stuff. And the police is, you know, asking me all these questions over the phone. What's your location? What's the address? How does this person look? And all of that. And then that stuff is happening on the other side. Yes. And so then when this, he's like, I'm leaving right now. And he tries to run towards the elevator. And me and the security lady follow him. 
And she and she basically tells me to stand back that she has it, and I'm worried about her safety. But I'm like, okay, you know, I'm not going to do anything here to hurt any. I mean, as long as everyone's safe. And she and the guy gets in the elevator, and she stands in the middle of the elevator with her hand like this, not letting it, not letting the door close. Yeah. And then he's this like, guy, he's pushing and hitting her. He's pushing her and throwing her against the wall because he wants the elevator to close. Yeah. And then he's like, "I'm leaving. I'm running." And he knew the building. He knew it. He's like, "I'm going down the stairs," and he knew exactly. I don't know where the stairs are in the building. I didn't. And he knew where the stairs were. And he, he exactly took that route to the stairs. Yeah, and you. He didn't have to search at all. He goes down the stairs. She follows him. Then I'm on the phone with 911. I tell, yes. I tell 911 that he's running down the stairs. The security's after him. How far are you guys? How far are you guys? And he's like, we're getting there. We're getting there. Derail him. We're getting there. I'm like, okay. So then I, then we lost sight of them. Yeah. And then after a few minutes, the police come with the lady and they're like, we got him. And she, you know, risked, risked her life and limb. You know, God bless her. And she was able to slow him down enough and, uh, for the police to arrest him. Yes. Unbelievable. 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 And the scariest part was this person was in the consultation room the entire time. Yeah. So what we think happened was yeah. when Lexi went to the bathroom, he came in the office and he, I think he knows the space, the building. Yeah. And he was doing what he did and he unlocked the back door. Yeah. And then when she kicked him out, he went around through the back door inside in the back into the consult room. And locked himself in there. And the police said he had, when they arrested him, they found two access cards. One was for- Across uh, the building. Uh, yeah, I can't say the name of the building. Another building in our, by us. And they believe the other building card was for our building. So it seemed like he's done this before. Yeah, he had access cards in his backpack. Um, and then do you want to tell him what we um, saw when we went into the consult room? Yeah, so I go into my office and he had- you know, pried open some of the cabinet doors and broken the locks mm -hmm. on the computer there was Pornhub playing mm -hmm. on my desk there was a white body secretion um lotion like looking thing. yeah and there was also lotion next to it um so we believe and, he, and there was an empty bottle of Gatorade empty bottle of orange Gatorade right uh and my bathroom was open so I think he, he violated the bathroom so that's a different story. So basically, it sounds to us that this is unbelievable. He was breaking into the cabinet to see what he could find. He was watching porn on the office computer while he was likely um, Doing touch, yeah, touching himself. Or, you know, probably, I don't know if I can say this, jerking off. Is that a legal word? We can say that. By doing that, and he came all over the desk. It's true. I mean, how else am I supposed to say this? I can't believe it. Yeah. And, um, Poor Lexi. Oh my God. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry, medical doctor face. So he, yeah, uh, so he was um, ejaculating over the desk, my desk. Yeah, so we, don't so worry, I, we've, we've, we've sanitized. Yes, everything. absolutely. We used um, special chemicals and wipes that kill HIV, herpes, everything. There's no, shouldn't be any bugs there. Yeah, um, we de disinfected and sanitized the entire area, wherever yeah. we thought this person was. So, so. then the, the police came. Mm -hmm. the Seattle police was super nice, very caring. I, I have to give them a shout out. Don't you think so, Sabrina? Definitely. Very nice, easygoing people. Uh, Capitol Hill Police Department. They helped us. They um, took the cigarette butt as evidence. They, the Gatorade uh, bottle. The Gatorade bottle. They're going to run DNA because they're like, it's a burglary. It's a big deal. They took everybody's statements. They made us feel really safe. Um, uh, very kind people. They, and then they um, they left, and then Sabrina and I cleaned everything with sp special chemicals to de to sanitize everything. But that was such a wild experience. Wild experience. And, and, and he was saying things that didn't make sense. You know, I, I think there might have been definitely a level of mental illness for this guy. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, we we just kept saying to ourselves, what would have happened, Sabrina, if we wouldn't have gone at night? Yeah, that's exactly what we're thinking, that what if we had not gone and the, you know, the girls would have probably just locked up the office and left. And then they would have seen like the next morning when they have, would have came, they, the whole office would have been ravaged. And, you know, our office were state Medicare accredited surgery center. None of our cabinets were broken into, but we have drugs like narcotics that are locked up or nothing was open. All that was safe. We have hundreds of thousands of dollars of drugs, if not millions. And, um, Oh, it's just unbelievable. unbelievable. So we wiped every surface down. We cleaned everything up. We wiped, we wiped up all the cigarette um, ash. 
and everything else. Oh, that was something else. And, that was definitely something else. If we wouldn't have gone at night, I have a feeling he would have called his friends. They would have come in because he had an access card and now he has access to the office. They would have looted the place. Oh, easily. At the, you know, MacBooks, iPads, you know, they would have gone into the drawers, found things, injectables. Yeah. I mean, all of our patient information is super safe. Even with the computer, you can't access anything mm -hmm. because everything is encrypted and password protected. So he didn't get any patient information. Yeah. And the computer that he was on, the only thing on that computer is FaceTime and Safari. Exactly. So. There's no patient information on that one at all. We use it, that. We use that computer for FaceTiming patients sometimes, but there's no information on there. So that's the only computer that basically he could get into. It was Use some, the internet. It's unbelievable. The, um, everybody at the office was safe. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, uh, you know, we cleaned up. It was supposed to be an early day, but it ended up being a, a late night. But uh, thank God, you know, everybody was safe and protected. Hats, you know, hats off to Lexi. I know. I know. Her hats. bravery. <laughs> you know, and we asked Lexi, you know, when we got there, there was music playing. And um, did you look in the room and she, she, was, she was so sweet and so kind. What did she tell you? She said that, you know, I thought I heard the music was playing, mm -hmm. but then I, I kind of told myself maybe the girl, you know, the, the staff from earlier probably just mistakenly left it on and she just disregarded it and walked away because I think she was probably in the back of her mind was like, oh, I'm not sure if he's really gone or he's around. But, you know, um, if I was in her situation, I would have left. But I mean, yeah, she she definitely was brave enough to even tell him to leave the office, you know, so. We have amazing people we work with and we're so blessed to have their company and have them give us one of their most valuable resources, which I know is their time. And we're so thankful for that. Yeah. And now we're, you know, um, putting in more security features at our office and um, amending our protocols to make sure everyone's even more safe. So. Yeah. One of the things we're, we're likely going to do is have our own private security. So we're looking into that. Um, it's just Seattle right now. I love Seattle, but it, mm -hmm. you know, we live in downtown and I can tell everyone it's, it's not what it used to be. Yeah. It's yeah. I think, I, yeah, I moved here a, a little bit a year ago, overly, a little bit over a year ago, but even just from a year and a half or two years ago, I feel like Seattle's a totally different place. And one of our favorite restaurants is by Pioneer Square. We can say the name. We like it. Nirmal's. It's, a, mm -hmm. it's like a fine dining Indian restaurant. And we used to love going there, mm -hmm. but now we can't go there because just when you're trying to park and get there, you get harassed by so many, you know, panhandlers, people who are yelling and screaming, poor people are mentally ill. You feel you know, bad for some of them, but since also, you know, you don't know who's the criminal or not. Like this guy, you know, what if I wouldn't have taken his stick and he started swinging at us? Or what, he, what if he had a pocket knife and you know, if he doesn't know right from wrong and the poor guy really is mentally ill, he could start stabbing us or anything. Yeah. So that was that was last night. Now, now let's let's talk about Fuchi. What's Fuchi, Sabrina? So um, Fuchi, um, the story about Fuchi is this: it was an individual um, that came in um, for injectable services, uh, made an, a new patient appointment, um, and came in wearing a fake Gucci mask, yep, aka Gu Fuchi. Yep, Gucci doesn't make masks, so sometimes people will buy them from Etsy, and so we just joke around and say it's it's a Fuchi. <laughs> So this lady came, she was in our, in our, she was in our lobby yeah. with, her, with her nice mask. And what was, what, what happened? I heard she got yelled at by another patient. So she checks in at the front desk, first time patient. Um, and she's, you know, a little bit of a loud person and, um, you know, her, just her demeanor and the way her tone was. Um, and then she checks in and then she has, she goes and have, you know, sits down in the lobby um, and then she's on her phone and she takes her mask off while she's talking to someone on the phone. And we have signs everywhere in the lobby, on the door. Please keep your mask on. We didn't make the rule. It's the governor's orders. We're following the rules. We believe in the rules and we're trying to keep everybody safe as much as we can. Yeah. Um, so she takes her mask off and she's loudly on her cell phone in the lobby. And, you know, the front desk is just about to go and, you know, talk to her. They're getting out of the front desk and going into the lobby to talk to her. And right before the, the, one of our front desk staff was about to get to her, the patient, another patient that was sitting in the lobby yelled at this Fuji person and says, do you not see the signs around here? Put your mask back on. And she just, she just looks at her like, did she just tell me that? Um, and she doesn't listen to her. 
She keeps her mask off. Yeah, she keeps her mask off. She just looks at her and then she just keeps doing her own thing. And the patient again, this other patient again says, you have to put your mask back on. It's the law. Yeah. And then she puts her mask on and then she comes to the front desk and starts yelling at the front desk girls. What is she telling them? She's saying, who is that person to tell me to wear a mask? I'm not going to wear a mask. Who is this person? And then the front desk, you know, lets her know. Unfortunately, that's our policy that you must be wearing a mask at all times while you're in this facility. Um, unfortunately, that we, we cannot, you know, amend that policy. Um, and they, they told her she can nicely not get services and leave uh, uh, if you don't want, don't want to wear your mask, right? Yeah, they said if you know you were happy to cancel your appointment, there won't be any charge or any fees for canceling the appointment if you don't want to get services here. And she says, no, no, I have this coupon. I have this coupon. And she pulls up her phone and she's like, oh, yeah, I have this coupon. Can you check my coupon? Can you check my coupon? Loudly. And I'm like, a whole lobby is listening to her. And she's yelling this coupon that she has really loudly in the office. So and was she all branded out otherwise? Yes. Okay. Fuji mask, LV bag, Gucci shoes. Yeah. Excellent. And she wanted to use her coupon. Got to use the coupon, guys. So she got to pay for that stuff somehow. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, she sees one of our providers and, you know, she's a rough patient. So what was the coupon for? Do we, I don't think we take coupons. Do we take coupons? <laughs> we don't take coupons, but this, um, th it was a promotional coupon that was through the filler company. Brilliant distinctions? Or, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's a, that's a Botox rewards program. Yeah. Yes. It's a rewards program through a filler company and she wanted to use that. And the front desk did advise her that there's a certain type of filler that you have to get in order to use a coupon. And she's like, yeah, I only want to use that so I can use my coupon. Um, so then, uh, the front desk let her know that the provider will go over with all the details with her and then she can decide if she wants to get the service and use her coupon. And she's seeing our, one of our best injectors, right? Our, our physician assistant, right? Yeah. Natalia. Yeah. And then, so what happens with that encounter? I heard it was really rough. Yeah. She goes, Natalia takes the patient back and, you know, is talking to her about all the risks, going through all her medical history because she's a first time patient. Um, it's usually an hour long appointment. So that way they can kind of make sure they're going over everything. Um, and there's something that the patient has. Uh, I think it's a medical condition um, that. Um, she had cold sores. Yeah. Yeah. She had cold sores and the patient um, wants lip filler. And she's demanding lip fillers. And, you know, as everyone knows, cold sores are due to a virus. It's herpes in the lip. It happens, you know, it doesn't have to be. It can be transmitted in many ways. Just sharing a coffee cup doesn't have to be sexual. And so this patient's demanding you know, to use her coupon because it's expiring. Yes. And she's saying, you must, and she tells our PA, you must give me lip filler because I have this coupon, right? And Natalia is like, absolutely. Natalia is very nice. She's, you know, just to give you a picture of her, she's a stern, smart, focused person, Ukrainian. She's very direct, straightforward. She moved here from Manhattan to work for us. And Natalia tells her, um, ma'am, you have cold sores, I can't give you a lip filler because you haven't been properly treated for the cold sores because mm -hmm. this patient is talking to Natalia with an active cold sore in her mouth. Yes. Um, and Natalia said, unfortunately, I won't be able to treat you today um, because you're not on a treatment for this cold sore. Um, and she, the patient's really upset because she wants to use her coupon. And, and so just so everybody knows, when you have cold sores or a herpes virus and we inject you and you're not on proper medicine, it can flare up and it can take over your face. So what you do is, one, you can't have an active cold sore. And if you have a history of cold sores and we're giving you lip filler, which is injections in your lip, it can reactivate the virus. What we do is we put you on prophylactic antiviral medicine. It's very inexpensive. There's two medicines, acyclovir or valcyclovir. You've seen commercials for Valtrax. It's that woman boxing. So basically, um, we tell people that we're going to Give it, to, give you this medicine. You start it a day before, and then you can go ahead and do it, right? Yes. Um, and she's demanding this, and she's saying, "Well, there's other injectors that I've been to in this area, and they've always treated me." And, she, and she's naming another practice in Bellevue. Yes. Right. And she's like, "This practice, uh, we'll leave them unnamed, is the best, and they don't care about my cold sores, and they'll inject my cold." Basically, she's saying they'll inject my cold sore, which we know is a lie. No one's going to inject a cold sore. Come on, wake up. Yeah, she's like saying that. Yeah, they do it. How come you can't do it? You just you're just not trained. Yep, you're not good enough. She's <laughs> telling our, one of our best injectors, who is one of the top ones, you're not good enough to inject. Yeah, she and, said you haven't been trained correctly. And then what did Natalia do next? She came out to talk to you, right? Yes, yeah, so and Natalia came out to talk to me. She told me the whole story. And then she says, is Dr. Sajan available to talk to this patient for a few minutes? Or what do you think I should do? 
Um, and then she came to you and told you uh, the whole situation. And when did she start threatening with negative reviews? Was this now or earlier or later? Later. Later. And, there's an Italia, and Natalia is like, she has a $50 coupon. I remember she comes to me and she's like, this patient's demanding uh, injectable treatment today. And I'm telling her no, she's not agreeing and she's getting very aggressive. Mm-hmm. So I told Natalia, and I hate to admit that I, you know, we had to say this, but I was like, Natalia, we don't want to. We don't want a difficulty with this patient. So why didn't you offer her in, um, the value of the coupon, which was 50 bucks? I said, just give her, tell her, you know what? You're a nice person. You came here. Uh, we'll give you $50 of free Botox just on us. Pick an area. We'll give you that much. And then you can kindly leave. And then we will follow up with you. And I told Natalia, just do that. And then if you're comfortable, if you're not comfortable, don't do it. And if the patient doesn't agree, don't do it. And then we're going to terminate her from our practice. Yes. Um, she was making a scene and becoming very rowdy and, and, you know, it was just too, too much. Yeah. And then she, um, you know, Talia went in there. She explained to her, she said, I understand you have this coupon, but we cannot do the filler. Um, but instead of that, I, I'm, I'm happy to give you 50 units of uh, $50 worth of Botox. Totally um, for free, guys. Totally for free. Because she, she's complaining about driving here and all this stuff. Yeah. We told her, we'll, you know, give you... Um, you know, as much value as a coupon um, for Botox. And we're happy to treat you today if that's what you like. And she said, yeah, yeah, sure, I'll do that. And we can't even redeem the coupon because it's not the filler. Mm -hmm. So we're like, we're just going to eat the loss. It is what it is. Yeah, we just wanted to, you know, make sure she's happy because she came for her appointment that she gets something out of it. So um, she got her um, her Botox and then um, she still goes to the did, front. Did she, did she get any extra units or did she just stick to the free? She stuck to the free. Absolutely. Um, and then, and then guess what? She goes to the front and asks the girls in the front, can I use the coupon? So she wanted to make, uh, how, uh, for what? what? Was she expecting us to give her her 50 back? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know what she wanted. We're, we're running a, we're running a center where we're giving away free Botox and we're going to pay you to get it. <laughs> yeah. And then the girl, and then, you know, uh, right, like within like 30 seconds, Natalia comes, you know, to the front desk and she's like, oh no, you, you already got your 50, $50 worth today. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's so Natalia. <laughs> and then she, you know, kindly just lets her know that she got her 50 units today, uh, $50 worth of Botox and, you know, feel free to um, call us back if there's any issues. Um, but we'll, we'll touch base with her about the filler. Um, and then she, she leaves and then she calls the next day, right? Demanding or same day. Yeah, no, she leaves and calls the same day. Okay. Um, she's like, I need to speak to her manager. And, you know, one of our leads here talks to her and, um, she's complaining about how bad the service was. She's complaining about. You were here. We were seeing the whole thing. So we know exactly what service she got. Yeah. How bad the service was, how Natalia treated her. Um, she says she didn't get to use her coupon, which was expiring, um, that she's very unhappy and was going on and on and on. And, you know, our lead apologized to her. So she said, you know, I apologize for your time, but we did already comp you $50 worth of Botox because you wanted to use your coupon. You couldn't get the filler the same day, but our providers here will not put patients at risk for anything that's filler, Botox, whatever it is. If it's something you need and you're, you have a condition, we cannot treat you. And then this lady was demanding to come see us again. Yes. And then what did you tell them? Um, and we said, unfortunately, um, we're just not a good fit for each other. So we, yeah, we, exactly. We told her we're terminating nicely. You said it nicer than me. Mm-hmm. Or not. you told us for Lee to say it nicer than me, that nice patient, you know, we're terminating you from our practice. Um, you, know, you know, please don't come here and go back to that other practice you were saying and we wish you the best. And, Thank you. Yes. And then, um, you know, we hang up the phone and then she calls again. What? What did she say? And this time she's using curse words, curse words, the B word and the F word towards Natalia and the lead that spoke. to her. And, and who's talking to her now? Another, another lead person that works here. Um, and she's literally going off and saying, you know, what kind of practice this is what kind of people work here they are all so and so um and she is just cursing and cursing all over the phone like treating us like we we did something to her and then that conversation ends and sabrina and i are in a meeting 
And Sabrina's phone starts going off like crazy. Yeah. Nonstop. And Sabrina picks it up. And who was it? The patient. The same lady. So it's a weird number. And I, of course, I didn't have this number in my phone. And I'm like, okay, it's a Washington State number and it's ringing. And I was like, I guess I'll answer it. And I'm, I look at you. I showed it to you as well. And you're like, okay, just answer it. And I go, hello, um, this is Sabrina. And then she was like, I'm, try- I'm trying to reach um, the Gallery of Cosmetic Surgery, the Linwood office. And I'm like, yes, how can I help you? And she's like, this person and this per-, she's like naming all these people that work here. And then she's going off and cursing again. And she's saying how bad of a practice we are. We're not letting her back. And she didn't do anything. And she just wants the filler and going on and off. And I told her, you know, ma'am, this is not the right number. I asked her, I said, where did you find this number? Mm-hmm. And she said, oh, I, I found it online. I Googled it and I found it. And I said, do you know who this is? And she's like, no, I just, I just looked it up. I was looking for phone numbers that were related to this practice. And I found this one. And Sabrina's number is not listed anywhere <laughs> online. I don't know where she found it from. That's wild. That's wild. So she's probably listening to this episode. She probably follows us and she somehow <laughs> dug it up. <laughs> probably. Yes. Well, if we upset you, sorry, but kindly don't come or call, to our, call us or ever see us again. Yes, please, please don't curse to our employees or about our, our employees. Exactly. We, we love all of our patients and we value them and we cherish them and we're so thankful that we have them. We hold ourselves to a very high standard and we ask our patients to do the same. Mm-hmm. We're honest, we're kind, we're giving, and we try to be the ni- as nice as we can. And for us, maintaining our integrity is more important than doing as much as we can. Our goal is not to do as much as we can, but we're going to do the best we can. Well, that was a wild week, Sabrina, wasn't it? Definitely. (laughs) Thanks for listening to Clinic Talk on the Plastic Surgeon Podcast. It's been fun. Please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts to support the channel and hear more great content. Tune in next week for more Clinic Talk. We have more great stories coming your way. For my live surgeries on Snapchat and adventures throughout the week, catch us on all social media at Real Doctor Seattle. See you next time. Bye. Bam work.